Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com. So here's another watch and learn. And as I mentioned, when I did the uh, Bulova uh, electrostatic movement watch, I said I'm going to do a, a grander scale video. Um, and so that this is that video. I want to cover watch movements from basically when kind of pocket watches went into wrist watches from that point on forward, um, culminating in the electrostatic movement. Because I'd say that's the, probably the latest movement. I want to cover, I don't know, like eight or nine different movement types. Uh, I guess it's not really exhaustive. It's not meant to be exhaustive. Like, I'm not going to include the coaxial escapement because that's really just an improvement on the on your normal balance wheel um, escapement. Um, I think I've covered just about everything, and I think I have an example of everything, too. Um, so it's going to be, I think it'd be a lot of fun. Uh, so my own, this is the first video I'm filming in the new year. So, you know, this was the part of that 50-piece limited edition series that I did with Spinnaker. Um, but truth be told, there were 51 made, not 50. Number double zero uh, is this one. It was the first sample. Um, so I sized it. I'm going to wear it. And a throwback from years ago, the drum roller watch. So you'll hear it probably clicking when I do the video as it clicks over in time. That's it. Let us take a little trip. So to watch and learn this thing, um, I was trying to think about how I can keep this the simplest, the simplest way possible um, and break it all down. So I'm going to break down all the watch movements that I talk about between, I think, what I feel the three things that define all of them. Engineers note, I use energy and power usually in, you know, in talking interchangeably. I fully understand they are not the same thing, but for our purposes of conversation, we will break them down into energy generation, energy storage, and then how do we release that energy or regulate it? Energy regulation. So I know I said we're going to start off with wristwatches. Yeah, and, and from when mechanical wind on up. But my only mechanical wind that's very see-through is this uh, Invicta pocket watch that I've had for a number of years. Now, I have shown videos on how balance wheel escapements work in excruciating detail. Um, but you know, I'll show this briefly, and then we'll carry on. So let's see, how is this whole thing going to work? So energy generation. I have these little things here. Look at this. So how do we generate energy here? We're going to, it's a hand wind, right? We have to hand wind it. How does it get stored? Well, it gets stored in a mainspring, right? And how does it get regulated? Well, it gets regulated through a mechanical escapement. So mainspring is over here. Winding is done through the crown. Uh, balance wheel, I'm trying to look, uh, is down here. You can see it. Actually, you can see the spring and the jewel in the center. So as I wind this, you'll see that balance wheel at the bottom start moving. It did. And then seconds hand starts going. So what's happening is the energy is stored in this spring, right? It's traveling through the entire movement, and it is basically culminating at this balance. And there's a little... See that little thing going up and down right there? And then a little wheel going counterclockwise, the escape wheel. Uh, this little pallet with the jewel on the end is oscillating via a pin that's on this balance. It's uh, releasing and stopping this escape wheel uh, 20, probably 21,600 times an hour. And we get this ticking of the seconds hand. It ticks six times a second. And that's how this whole thing works. I'll flip it over if you want to take another look. This is really cool. I mean, this is one of the things, obviously, that I enjoy about watch watches in general. The mechanic, the mechanics of it. Uh, this I got in 2002. It still runs, but you can see all the wheels going. And if you want to just kind of stick out, hang out here for a second and watch it, you can see how the whole thing works. Like a beautiful, beautiful symphony. Okay, so let's just imagine that this is a a hand wound watch. So what is the next evolution in watches? Well, we're getting to the self winding wrist watch. I have my bag of tricks here. You guys have seen this one before. This is a swatch irony body and soul. So what have we done? What is the difference between this and what you just saw? Well, it's pretty simple. I'm going to take away, I'm going to try to take away hand winding. 
I'm going to try to pick it up with a glove. And winding is now accomplished through your motion via an eccentric weight. The other two items remain the same. So let's take a look again. This is stopped. This is, my, again, my swatch, uh, body and sole. Balance wheel at the top, not moving. Mainspring down here and a whole bunch of gears. We will flip it over and this is that eccentric weight that I talked about, that rotor thing that thing spinning. Or we can wind this by hand. And the balance will start up. And just like in the mechanical wind movement, the, uh, the energy is being released. Um, in this case, I believe 28,800 times an hour or eight times a second to produce that kind of tickety tick 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 of the seconds hand. Very pleasing, very soothing. And so this winds with, we can wind it ourselves through manual wind or, like I said, motion via an eccentric weight. So this eccentric weight is geared down and will actually turn this mainspring. Okay, so this is like, um, where are we? We're 19, I have some notes actually. We're, we are in the 1920s now, the, ad, the uh, invention, if you will, of the self-winding wristwatch. So now, what happens next? Well, we really don't see much, I would say. Again, I'm not covering absolutely every movement under the sun, just the ones that I feel were fairly important. I'm going to bring you into the Hamilton Ventura Cal 500. Um, the watch I'm going to show you is actually a Cal 505, which is a little bit of an improvement on it. So what happens? Well, energy generation is gone. We're not going to generate any energy. Okay, so where's the energy going to come from? Well, you probably already know where this is going. Disposable battery. Because now we have s small battery technology um, and then energy regulation. Eh, kind of like a mechanical escapement, um, but um, let's check it out. So this is a little Hamilton Electric that I picked up for the sheer reason of doing the video and I got interested in the movements. It's like, ah, I should buy one of these because it really completes. So this to me is, is the big crossover between having um, mechanical springs and a battery to run a movement. This, this watch embodies both of these things, a battery and a balance wheel going back and forth. I'm not gonna pull the back off of this because they're extremely fragile. I really don't wanna do it. I'll sh throw a photo of one of the movements up up so um but you could see this little guy has this circa 1955 watch i think no this is like 1960 i think um see it second hands ticking ah, a couple times a second one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so 12 times every five seconds i don't know you guys do the math whatever it might be um so What's going on? Well, inside is a little regular one and a half volt battery, okay? And that battery is used to generate a magnetic field in a coil. That coil is used to start oscillating the balance wheel. So magnetic field used to oscillate a balance wheel and then attach the balance wheel are two um, contacts and those contacts engage and disengage leads from the battery and that is what is kind of, in, you know, making the seconds hand go in these little, little increments. So as you can imagine, it's these wiping contacts. So the wear on them is extreme. These movements are generally not considered to be extremely reliable, though the person that I bought it from um, says you should get a couple of years out of the battery. But when you're not using it, you should pull the crown to stop the balance from oscillating because that's when it gets its most wear. Um, but it is amazing that this watch still functions so cool like i said it is really this is a cal 505 i know i said cal 500 before um before we got into it but um it's really amazing that they're able to bridge the gap and this to me is like the i guess the rosetta stone in a way of getting from mechanical into battery okay so now our friends at Bulova come along you guys know where this is going this is now around 1960 and they say okay I'll see your disposable battery, but your method of doing it there, Hamilton, 
I don't know if they really said that. Uh, it's not really great, not really reliable. There are some issues with it. Instead of using a mechanical, kind of an escapement for that, we are going to use a tuning fork. And listen. I do not know if you could hear it. I can hear it. Um, I did put it right up to the microphone. I'll try to amplify it if I can. The Accutron was born. Again, this is circa 1960. So what the heck is happening here? Well, interesting of note, this is the popular model. This is the Accutron Space View that everybody kind of, you know, ogles over. The Space View was never meant to be a production unit. It was a unit that was sent to stores uh, so that people could actually see the innards. But it became so popular that it actually... I, I believe this now, in my opinion, personifies what Accutron is, this space view, the way the watch looks. Um, this is my space view. Uh, it is running. Uh, so, what, so what happened here, right? So let's just back up a second. I'm sorry. So we have no energy generation. So we are running on a battery. The battery is contained under this hatch. By the way, this is the setting lever. You flip up the little thing, you pull it and turn it and set it. The store, okay, so no energy generation storage is through a disposable battery. But now, how are we releasing the energy? Well, we are using a tuning fork, and that is the namesake of the watch. Accutron, their kind of logo is that tuning fork. Uh, you have two electromagnetic coils here, uh, copper coils, and they are exciting a tuning fork. The tuning fork, in this case, is tuned to 360 hertz. That is the Accutron, Accutron hum that is oh so popular uh and the second hand is moving moving at i would guess around 360 times a second uh barely imperceptible extremely smooth extremely fluid like battery life on these about one to two years we get into battery life in a second or in a, in a little bit when we talk about some other things i'm just checking around because I, I have stuff everywhere right now it's it's a mess um but this is the accutron and this represented a real large step forward in accuracy um, for wristwatches. I mean, you know, uh, seconds a month. This was the leaps and bounds better than mechanical movements and, of course, that um, Hamilton movement that you saw before. Um, and it was fairly, fairly robust. As you can see, this watch is 60, what, 60 years old, and it still runs. I just needed to actually replace the battery for the video uh, um, and it took right off. But people that, you know, work on these, it, it is a dying art. Okay, so let's, let's finish with Accutron. And now, it's going to take about another 10 years or so. And what's going to happen? Well, I'm going to say, okay, we're still digging this disposable battery thing. Because battery technology is increasing. But batteries becoming smaller. Um, but this whole tuning fork thing, let's get rid of this. Instead of using a tuning fork for energy regulation, ha, ah, we're going to try this quartz crystal thing, this quartz oscillator. This is the watch, you guys, I do not think I've ever shown. Um, I pulled it out of <laughs> another watch cabinet that I have, and to my surprise, after I replaced the battery, it started running. I bought this on my honeymoon. That's night. No, 1998, my God. That's 2001 uh, in Honolulu. So this is a Swatch Jelly. Um, totally see-through quartz watch. There is a little bit of um, hazing in, in the center. Um, and that's probably why I just put it away and kind of forgot about it. But we have a battery. The battery is over here, accessible through this little battery hatch. It's a small little button battery. And what quartz does is quartz uses a oscillator, a crystal oscillator, a quartz oscillator, a quartz crystal. Call it what you want. It's cut into usually a tuning fork shape, but it can really be any shape you want. Quartz is a very interesting material. Quartz uh, exhibits what they call uh, piezoelectricity. It's a piezoelectric effect. If you take quartz and you bend it, move it, um, deform it, it generates a little bit of electricity on its surface, which is really cool. But, you know, engineering being engineering and science being science, if you do it in the reverse, if you apply a little electric current to a piezoelectric material, it actually will move or vibrate. So that is what is happening with quartz. They have quartz, and very curiously, it likes to oscillate at a fixed frequency. They choose it and cut it so that it gets as close to 32,768 vibrations per second, 
Why such a weird number? Well, one of the weirdnesses of it is that that's just the way quartz is is made. That uh, um, quartz is defined. Uh, that would be a material scientist, not me. Um, but this is exactly what two to the fifteenth power is. So you generate now. So now, like, like I said, we're in the late sixties, early seventies. You make a little circuit. The circuit counts the oscillations of quartz. So you have a little battery. You apply a voltage to a quartz crystal, and the quartz starts to vibrate. I'm just going to zoom in on it. After 32,768 times, or 2 to the 15th bits, are filled, you have a little overflow, and the computer can count one second. If you have a second's hand, you can increment a now a stepper motor. Again, so besides batteries getting smaller, we're getting motors are getting smaller. So there is a stepper motor somewhere up here, and it is ticking away. This stepper motor decides to tick every 20 seconds. Watch is still working on the same frequency quartz oscillator, okay? The only difference is, is that there, the watch lacks a second's hand, and if you watch it, the minute hand will move three times. There we go. It just went. It will move in another 20 seconds. What does that do for us? Well, it's a very small battery, so it gives us a longer battery life. Watches do not need seconds hands. Um, so that stepper motor is only working three times a minute, which is really cool. And then everything else is geared down. You can see these small gear on top of a large gear. Um, and that gives us gearing reduction so that we can move minute hands and hour hands. You want to move an hour hand, it just has to move 1 60th as fast as a minute hand, etc, etc. That's the way the whole thing works. So part of this conversation is, you know, I know people always say, you know, oh, the, the second hand is so smooth on, um, let's not say spring drive, precision, which we'll get into. It's very important to note that has nothing to do with the precision of the watch. Um, in those cases, okay? In a mechanical watch or an automatic watch that has a higher beat rate, uh, 28,800 versus 21,600, sure. Generally can be more accurate because you have more perturbations and you can, or more vibrations and you can have, I guess, a, a same, the same percentage of bad oscillations and it has the same effect on accuracy. Does that make sense? 20,800 vibrations per hour versus 21,600 vibrations per hour. You can have a little, uh, the, the same amount of bad oscillations, but you'll be, have a more accurate watch simply because there's more vibrations happening. So quartz crystal, this was the quartz revolution. This kind of, you know, basically almost did away with the mechanical watch industry. Um, but this is the quartz watch. Lacking a second's hand, sure, I get it. Go, you want to go digital, go digital. It all works exactly the same way. You just need a little LCD display. So what's next? So we have to now go oh around six or seven years or so, and our friends at Citizen do this. They say, okay, I'm going to use light to generate power or energy, and then instead of it being a disposable battery. I'm going to use some kind of an energy storage device. It could be a capacitor, rechargeable battery. Call it what you want. It's definitely a rechargeable battery. By not necessarily by definition, but um, in in use. And everything else remains the same. So I'm going. I'm keeping with my friend Quartz Oscillator. Here is my Citizen Echo Drive, Eco Drive. I don't know. I always get it wrong. So this is powered through light you can see i have a full charge on it which is amazing because the watch is very very old not very old I mean, you know at least the watch is at least a decade old um and the three semi-transparent windows here one two three four excuse me um are allowing light through to a solar cell that solar cell is converting the light into energy the energy is flowing into a some kind of capacitor rechargeable battery and that is powering a quartz oscillator and that is keeping time it makes no difference that we have a chronograph built on top of this. This is just a, you know, more functionality. But the main timekeeping of the watch is the same. Okay, so now we're kind of like in the mid '70s. Um, you know, I would say that this was done from a environmental standpoint. I always think it's just, just done from, you know, who wants to keep replacing batteries? So we'll do this. And you know, the rechargeable cells in solar watches generally go 10 to 20 years before they need any kind of replacement. Interestingly enough. Just about every solar watch, more than likely every solar watch, every kinetic watch that we'll get into in a second, you can just remove the rechargeable portion, substitute in a similar size one and a half volt battery, disconnect the generation leads from the light 
or the kinetic movement and the watch will still work. Um, it just won't be recharging. Uh, so this is where we are now. So, okay, mid 70s. So where do we go now? Well, we gotta wait. Guys, we gotta wait another 10 years before, again, what I consider the next great thing happens. So, energy generation, no more light. We do not see the light anymore. Uh, let's go back to the olden days. And let's make it motion. But we're not going to use a spring. We're going to use, again, a rechargeable element of some sort. And we are going to towards oscillator. I bring to you the Seiko Kinetic, which is not running. Let's flip off the case back for a second. Um, I believe it's loose. So we are now in mid-80s, and we are looking at a Seiko Kinetic. So, um, let's see. Do I have anything to push this around with? I thought I did. Here we go. Excuse me. As I said, mess. So it's a rotor. You hear that? It's a rotor, rechargeable battery, and then you have your normal, you see inductor coils and stuff, your normal stuff that you would have with a quartz watch. There's still a quartz oscillator. Kinetic watches were made for many years, but to this day are not very popular. Why? Well, see all that movement I just gave it? It's not even running. So that's kind of why. Let me just put the back on it really quick. So here we are in 1986 and the Kinetic comes out. Uh, I say Kinetic was made for a number of years. Kinetic works by that oscillating weight, but what it does is that you heard the winding. There's a gear train inside and it magnifies at least by about a hundredfold the rotation of the rotor and it spins a little electromagnetic generator, which is very different from our electrostatic movement that we saw in the in the bowl of Acuton 2020. An, electro, an electromagnetic movement and that little rotor spins between 10 and 100,000 RPM to generate electricity to store in that device to give to the watch. As I said, not very popular kinetics because as anybody that has a kinetic will tell you, you have to wear the heck out of it. Auto, automatic winders will not work. They simply do not generate the speed you need to wind the watch. So I'm going to just, I have a dead, yeah, dead, dead Islander here on my right hand and a kinetic. I'm gonna just, just give them each a little bit of a wind, you know, just like this, just for a couple of seconds, right? And I'll show you why kinetic is just not popular. Look at the Islander ticking away. Now look at the kinetic. And the kinetic is dead already. The Islander will probably go for at least an hour or two of its 40 hours. Um, and the Kinetic, already gone. You really need to wind the crap out of it. Shake it up like you wouldn't believe it to get it to keep going. So that is Kinetic. So, what happens now? Well, the big boys come in. So we say, okay, we like being motion driven. Energy storage. We want, we're going to take this out of here. And go back to a mainspring. So, so far we have the makings of a mechanical watch, right? Isn't that true? But we're going to take the quartz crystal away, kind of. And we're going to put this in. You ready for this one? This is a long one. Ha, doesn't even fit. That says quartz referenced electromagnetic break. That's my, that's my term for it. Maybe Seiko has a different term for it. But that's what I'm calling it. Um, here it is. So we are now in 1999. I did an entire video on how spring drive works from soup to nuts. I'll try to reference it if I remember, put a card up. But this is my spring drive watch. So it has the energy storage and generation of a mechanical watch. But the regulation kind of of a quartz watch, but not really. This is the only watch I'm going to show you that has a true true fluid seconds hand which basically it's not stopping at all it's it's not running i know that uh, what i wanted to discuss really briefly i know i said i have a whole video on it and i hope you watch it but the way spring drive works is you wind it or has an auto winder wind a spring as the spring un unravels it spins the glide wheel there's also a little generator that's being spun at the same time. That generator spins up and generates power for the entire watch circuitry, okay? Um, and also powers its own electromagnetic brake. 
and the brake is what stops, slows the seconds hand. Unfettered, without this little brake in action, the seconds hand moves around much faster than the watch should tick. But once that brake starts, you'll see that the seconds hand moves at the fluid about one tick. You know, well, it moves fluidly, but it ha keeps correct time and is accurate to, they say a second a day and then 15 seconds a month. This thing is way ac more accurate than 15 seconds a month. Um, and that's the beauty of it. Okay? It's a mechanical driven watch. And there is a quartz crystal in it, but it's only using the quartz just to reference time and to keep the seconds hand moving at the correct rate. It's really amazing. It's a total feedback loop system. So why isn't it running? Well, my whole point is, is that when you give it power, the brake circuitry is not energized for the first couple of seconds. So when you wind it from dead, spring drive seconds hands fly much faster than normal time. Ready? See how fast it's going, and boom. Now it just slowed down. Now it's keeping normal time. So cool. Spring drive is awesome. I love it. It is very, very fluid. Like I said, we are now 1999. Very smooth, very beautiful. Like quartz reference electromagnetic brake. Is it a quartz driven watch? No. It's I like to say it's quartz referenced. Uh, just so cool. This to me is a true marriage of mechanical and electronic. Um, almost to me as revolutionary as the Accutron. Um, you know, that was electric and mechanical as well. I think this is so, so nifty. Um, but that is spring drive. Okay, so we are, our journey is almost over. Woo! Okay, we are now 2010, roughly. All right, we're going to go, we're going to get rid of these two things. Actually, we're going to get rid of everything. All right. We're going back to nothing. No energy generation. Okay. Where do we get our power from? Well, unfortunately, we're back to a disposable battery. Poop. But how are we regulating that energy? Well, how can we make it even more accurate? Remember when I talked about mechanical watches? Higher beat rates made them more accurate. How about higher quartz oscillation rates? <clears throat> you probably know where I'm going with this one. This is the Boulevard Precisionist. It has a quartz crystal that oscillates at, instead of two to, two to the power 15, two to the power 18 oscillations. Uh, 200 and, is it 262 or 252? I'm sorry if I have the wrong number. Anyway, it's still a quartz crystal, very fine. I, I probably should mention the spring drive. The quartz crystals that Seiko uses are like totally, totally amazing, expensive, not cheapo quartz crystals, you know, really cultivated and machined extremely well to find tolerances. So in this case, um, it's, I believe it's a three-pronged tuning fork. So the frequency of um, vibration that they're measuring increases. This is not my watch, obviously. This is my wife's precisionist. Um, I did have to dig it out. But what I wanted to say, so this is basically the same as your quartz watch that we saw originally um, my swatch, right? That was 1969 technology. This is just, you know, sure, it's uh, 40 years later, um, but it's a much faster beat rate crystal and Bulova claims much higher precision, uh, which is great. But the second hand on this is very, very fluid. I don't know if it's um, smooth or if it's doing it like 30 times a second or something, but whatever it is, People confuse this fluidity of the second hand with accuracy. That is so far from the truth. It has nothing to do with it. In fact, the fluidity of this second hand requires a larger battery. It's a large three volt, three volt? I don't know. It's a lithium battery, like that, you know, one of those big, big batteries. It's basically the size of the watch. It only lasts about two years. The watch doesn't need a second hand to be accurate. Um, again, just moving the hand requires more energy. So Bolova can make a precisionist that ticks once a second, and it'll still be as accurate as all the other precisionists. But the public, they just assume that a smoother hand, like Rolex, is more accurate. And it has nothing to do with it. And to prove this point, not that this is a, not an accurate watch, but this is a Hemel electronic Stratus with a Seiko movement. 
This is a regular battery movement. It's taking, I think, three to four times a second. Okay? Regular quartz crystal. No precisionist crystal in here. This is a, you know, 32,768 hertz crystal that's in here. But just kind of keep that in mind. That fluidity of second-hand movement has absolutely nothing to do with accuracy. What does it have to do? It has a lot to do with battery consumption, actually. But this is precisionist, and precisionist has definitely grown. They are really cool. Um, do they make precisionists that are um, light-powered yet? I have no idea, but that to me would not be a new evolution in this because um, we've already seen solar-powered. But this is precisionist technology. I guess it's around 2010. Uh, and then it brings me to the last one. And this one you've already kind of seen, right? Um, let's see. Oh, all of this. These two things go away. This goes away. So we have... Sorry, give me a second. We have this. Ta -da. We have winding by this. So we have the making so far of what? We, it could be, it could be a kinetic, right? Um, but it's not. It is. Where is the other guy? I'm still looking. There it is. I think this is true. Actually, I'm not totally sure the oscillation frequency that's in. So this could be a kinetic, but it's not. It's the electrostatic movement. Uh, it's the bulova. I'm not sure if they use a, uh, a two to the 32,000 or a 252 or 262 kilohertz um, crystal here. My apologies. Um, I couldn't find anything in the literature. But this is the watch I already did the watch and learn on. I did make a um, blunder in that video. I did say that one day of movement was um, one hour of power reserve. Totally wrong. I'm sorry. I referenced, I, I reviewed again all my material. The way they word it is so weird, um, but it is one hour of continuous movement is one day of power reserve. So this is electrostatic movement. We're generating power through whoops, through an eccentric weight in the back. And in case you didn't see that, move, that video, I'm going to put a card up. You should watch it. And we spin these two little generators down here. We're charging a cap or a rechargeable battery, which is right up here. And then we have a quartz crystal. This is a little bit different because it uses electrostatic generators and electrostatic motor. So, oh, I gotta, I have to, sh I have to shake it to get the second hand to spin because the second hand shuts down after what? Um, what did we say? Five minutes in the last video? So there we go. So now this electrostatic motor up here is spinning away and you get that nice, totally fluid motion of the second hand. If it's if it's going slow, it's on purpose. It's because it's waiting for time seconds to catch up to it. This watch is also a little bit different because instead of one uh, a stepper motor, it's using um, an electrostatic motor to drive the seconds hand, and it's using a conventional stepper motor to drive the minute and hour hand. But this is this is what I consider to be the latest. I guess 2020 is pretty recent. Uh, the pretty most recent watch movement, I guess, evolution. And like I said, guys, um, not an exha exhaustive list at all. Like I said, I didn't mention Coaxial. I'm sure there's a bunch of others that I did not mention. But I feel like in the way that I'm, in the way that I broke it down between the three, the three traits, I feel like um, it was a good way to do it, and I feel like it covered everything. Uh, so I guess that's it. This was a long one. I think it was a long one. Uh, this has been Mark from LongOnWatch.com with Watch and Learn, showing you how all sorts of different watches work, and maybe some faux pas and misconceptions about fluidity of seconds hand versus accuracy. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you've not done so. Questions or comments, put them down below, and I'll be sure to address them as soon as I can. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.